What's going on everyone? This is Blake and in this video we're going to be breaking down how to come up with a bunch of different purposeful content ideas for you to produce within your content strategy to ultimately build a tribe and an audience of raving fans that want to purchase your products. So I'll cue the intro now and we'll dive right in as I share my screen and walk through how you can start breaking out these ideas itself and coming up with a bunch of them to start producing effortless content. All right, so as we dive into today's video on how to create purposeful content that actually moves your audience from one step to the next and takes them from being a prospect to a warm lead to a hot lead into a sale, I want to reference a video that I came out with last week for you guys, um, which I will pop up here and also link at the end of the, this video for you itself so you can check out if you haven't already. And that was the three C's to hitting 15K and 20K months. Those three C's came down to simply put content, conversations, and clients. For those of you that are watching this video that are below 15K months right now, the focus should be primarily on content creation and refining your content strategy, conversations and refining your messaging skills, and enrolling clients and making sales happen. Everything else outside of this is a distraction, ultimately pulling your focus and slowing the results itself. So going off of that video, today in particular, we're gonna talk about the element of content itself. So you can see here on this mind map that I have pulled up for you guys, we have Facebook profile here below content. So this can be Facebook profile, this can be Facebook group. It doesn't really matter where the channel is on this video in particular, I wanna talk more about the elements behind crafting purposeful content itself. So to start, I mapped out a couple different components that I look forward to start when I start generating content ideas to put out to my audience. And that usually comes down to bucket number one, which is value nurture content, bucket number two, which is story-based content, bucket number three, which is results content, bucket number four, which is belief shifting content, and bucket number five, which is lead generation content. So typically, all of these first four buckets are basically warming up your audience, nurturing them, and taking them from being someone that's unfamiliar with you to someone that's starting to know you and like you and trust you to someone that wants to learn more about how you can help them, which that's where the lead generation content comes in, where you're getting them to take that next step with you and open up into a sales conversation itself. Once you have these buckets dialed in, this is when you can start not having so many tedious messenger conversations and start regaining control of your business and letting your content do most of the selling and legwork for you. Remember what I said if you watched last video and that was the statement of right here. Your content fuels your sales opportunities, not your messenger conversations. Attracting your ideal client should be simple and anything else is exhausting. So if you're putting the focus on messenger conversations now, this is gonna be a very helpful video for you to start really refining your content strategy and breaking down these buckets to start putting out purposeful content and ultimately stepping back from being a messenger all day long. So with that said, I'm gonna dive into each and every individual bucket here, and we're gonna talk about some topics that you can go out and think about and how you can create a multitude of topics for these buckets to start producing these types of content. So I figured I would just pull my face down here as we dive into these elements because I don't wanna cover up any topics that I list out, especially as we get over into lead generation content itself. But let's start with value and nurture-based content. So if this is one of these five buckets that we're focusing on, let's talk about how we can start mapping out ideas for this. So if we think about value and nurture content, this is basically used to serve as a purpose to earn trust from your audience and ultimately build that no like trust factor so everything else becomes easier within the process behind that. So usually the best place to start with value and nurture-based content is to ask yourself, okay, what am I selling right now? What is the core offer that I'm selling? What is the promise that it, it promises itself? What is the end goal for someone when they jump into the offer of the program that I'm selling? Along with that, also think about what is the core problems that my ideal client or, or my target audience is dealing with that I can help bridge the gap from where they're at to where they wanna go. To illustrate that for you, before we even dive into that, Think about your current audience members being at point A. And point B is where they become a sales opportunity. So once you get them in your audience, 
if it's on Facebook, once they become your friend, in order to get them from point A to point B, you need to put out different layers of content to ultimately continue to warm them up, build their trust and nurture them to the point where they're actually open to getting to the point where it's point B and they're actually having a sales conversation with you. Sometimes it can happen earlier on, but nine times out of 10, it's much, much easier if you have this dialed in because as you start bringing more people in your audience, you have an ecosystem of content that's constantly nurturing up people, moving them towards that next step and turning them from being a prospect to a lead and to a sale in your business itself. So what we're doing with these five types of content here is we're moving them from point A to point B through these itself. So as we dive into these five pillars here and talk about how to start fleshing out and coming up with a bunch of different content ideas for each, let's start with first one, which is value and nurture content. So usually the very place, best place to start with this is to think about, okay, what is the problem that we're solving with our offer? And what is the promise that our offer provides to help bridge that gap and get them to their end goal? And through that, to get them to that promise, what are the core pillars of the program that we're selling teach? So do they teach mindset, for example? Do they teach marketing and sales? What are the core pillars that the program that you're selling teaches? And you're gonna take those core pillars and start breaking them up and start with those four to five to six pillars, whatever it is that the program offers, and then think backwards in terms of ideas that we can produce on value and nurture-based content from there. So let's just say for the sake of example, to keep things simple, that the core pillars that your program teaches are mindset, marketing, and sales. So with this, now we wanna think about, okay, what are some areas that my ideal client or my target audience deals with mindset-wise that I can speak on and provide value to? And if you're feeling stuck on this and you don't know what those ideas are, those pain points are, you could say, okay, when I was just getting started along my journey, what were some mindset blocks that I experienced that were holding me back? Because usually in the beginning when you're struggling to get clear on who your ideal client is, the best place to start is to ask yourself, okay, where was I at when I was getting started? Because usually your ideal client is a previous version of yourself. So if we think about mindset, maybe early on you dealt with shiny object syndrome bouncing around from one opportunity to the next, not being really clear on where you wanted to go and not really having clear direction what you wanted to do. Maybe you also dealt with imposter syndrome, feeling like a fraud because you don't have the results to everybody else in the space. So for the sake of example, without covering up too much of the screen here, I wanna just start with the core components and talk about some subtopics that you can come up with each. So like we just talked about with mindset, we have imposter syndrome, we have shiny object syndrome. You could also talk about being more efficient with your time, managing your time when you're working a nine to five job. Think about areas where you know mindset wise that your people are getting stuck at that you can shed light and provide value on. Same with marketing. Maybe on the topic of marketing, it's around how to, how to come up with your first 10 content ideas or how to write your first long form piece of content. Basically, you're providing value on each and every one of these elements because this eventually continues to hit your audience, nurture them and get them to realize that, hey, Blake or whoever it is that is producing the content itself is a thought leader on this topic and it's helping bridge that gap and warm them up. So usually the best place to start with the value and nurture content is by breaking up the core components of your offer and then thinking about subtopics within those core components that you know that your audience is dealing with or that maybe you previously dealt with in the past that you can speak on and provide value on to nurture your audience. Now, when we look at story-based content, it's very similar to what we illustrated here in terms of breaking up those core components, except now we're tying in stories that we actually experienced along the way. So maybe for you, you dealt with shiny object syndrome, and now you can say three ways or three methods that I used to break past shiny object syndrome. That's one topic that you could do. You can also basically just think about, okay, based on where you're at when you started, what stories can you tell along your journey of the progression that you made? So if you dealt with shiny object syndrome early on, how can you tell a story about exactly what you were experiencing? How you were bouncing from one opportunity to the next? How you were bouncing from one product to the next? and how once you really started to shift your focus to one single offer and one product, you started to make 
progression and massive progress and started to achieve results. Because as you tell these stories, it starts to open the eyes up of your audience and make them realize, hey, maybe I am bouncing around too much. Maybe I should narrow my focus because Blake's been there before, Blake's done that, and he knows exactly how to get past it because he used to have shiny object syndrome as well, and now he's making consistent progress towards his goals. So to keep things simple on story-based content, it's very similar to value and nurture content. This is also a piece of nurture content. The only difference is, is that you are tying more of a story into it about your previous experience, breakthroughs, and wins along the way. So now looking at results-based content. Now, I know this is a big one that many people say, I don't have results early on, so how am I supposed to produce results-based content? If you're just getting started, if you don't have a bunch of results, do not let that hold you back in terms of producing content around this element. There's a few ways you can get around it. You can talk about quick wins that you've experienced. Maybe you just put out your first live video and now you can share breakthroughs that you made along your first live video. Now that obviously ties into a story, but it's still a result because you still went out and did something new outside of your comfort zone that was a win in your business and ultimately a result-based win. So as you start generating more wins via yourself or for your clients, you can share client wins, You can share personal business wins. You can share income wins. Usually these are the core ones that you're gonna be speaking on in terms of results-based content itself. But again, if you don't have matched results, it's okay. Just like you, if that's you right now, I started in that same spot. I was at ground zero once before it too. And the only way to break past it is to realize that everybody else out there starts at zero. And it's up to you to start bridging that gap and working to break past that and getting to some of those initial results so you can ultimately get on a better path. But to sit back and tell yourself, I don't have results so I can't produce content, you're, putting, you're doing an injustice to yourself and forgetting to realize that everybody out there started at ground zero. So this may not be an element that you incorporate a ton early on, but as you continue to progress, as you continue to get more results, as your clients get more results, this is a really great piece of content to put out because it really backs everything that you're doing. I'm a very strong advocate of results-based posts because when I can show results of my coaching program, of my students and myself, it validates everything that I do within my content. It validates my value content, my story content, all the elements, and it shows people that, hey, Blake really knows what he's talking about. Blake's practicing what he's preaching, and he's not just blowing smoke and mirrors. Next up, we're going to talk about belief shifting content. So with belief shifting content, you want to think about what are some false beliefs that your target audience is dealing with that you can basically shed light on and provide breakthroughs and inspiration. So with this, very similar to value nurture based content, except you're more dialing into objections and false beliefs that your target audience has. So maybe, for example, you're in Facebook Organic and you know that many people out there think that they need to find the perfect Facebook groups to add friends from. So if you could put out a post speaking on that, saying maybe a headline around looking for the perfect groups to build your audience from, and then you talk about that process and you break down the beliefs and let them know that, hey, in the early stages of my business, I used to think that finding the perfect group was the only way to build a targeted audience. But then I realized that once I started adding friends imperfectly, putting out content imperfectly and starting to generate results, that the target groups really didn't matter. So if you're out there trying to find the perfect target groups, I encourage you to add friends imperfectly, to put out content imperfectly and to show up and take action daily. That's a belief shifting post. That's a post that provides inspiration to your ideal clients and your target audience and your audience in general. And it's something that really breaks down what they're thinking, shifts their approach and mindset towards it and shows them your thought process behind it and allows them to really get a glimpse and insight of how you look at things and how you think about things. If they relate to that, if they like the message behind it, it's only going to make them trust you more, buy into you more and want to work with you more. So. Much like belief shifting content, it can be very similar to story and value-based content because you're usually sharing a story of yourself along with it. 
But in summary, what you're doing with belief shifting content is breaking down the false beliefs of your t audience itself and showing them new paths and providing inspiration towards breaking past what they're dealing with. Next up, we have lead generation content. So this should be the bread and butter for you of driving messenger conversations and driving sales opportunities once this foundation of the value, story, and belief shifting content is in place. So as you're putting out consistent value-based content, as you're putting out consistent story-based content, as you're breaking down false beliefs and pain points of your target audience, and eventually starting to layer in some results, now your audience is primed. Now they know, like, and trust you. Now they're going from someone that barely knew you to being a warm lead. And now when you go and put out a hook within your content, AKA a lead generation post, now you're able to get them to raise their hand and say, Hey Blake, I'm interested in what you have to offer and what you're doing. I'd love to learn more. And that's how you can start to drive a sales conversation from that. So lead generation content is, is usually something around giving away freebies. free trainings, checklists, etc. So it's usually around giving away something for free and you're using this as a way to capture attention of your audience because you're giving away something for free that you know is very hyper specific to them. So if you know that they're struggling with messenger conversations, maybe you came out with a note card messenger framework that breaks down exactly how to transition the conversation. And you can come out to your audience and say, I just produced a four by five note card messenger framework that shows you exactly how to move a conversation from prospect to lead to sale and create a sales opportunity. Or maybe you're showing people how to craft an offer. Your three core components to crafting a hyper specific and compelling offer that members of your audience will feel silly saying no to. Something that grabs their attention, that's based on these core elements of your offer itself, whatever those are, and basically you're going in on one of those elements in particular. You're not trying to come out with a freebie that covers mindset, marketing, and sales. You're gonna come out with a freebie that attacks one core component of what it is that you're selling and ultimately resolves a pain point that you know your audience is dealing with. So that's basically a summary of the core components of content that are needed to start building up an audience of raving fans that are starting to know you, like you, and trust you and wanting to work with you more. In summary, with all of these core content ideas, obviously we couldn't go super, super deep on them here, but hopefully this gives you some insight in terms of what to think about with each of these elements. But above all of this, a great place to start to generate a bunch of ideas is to simply think about a list of pain points that your target audience has. So if you make a new square here, we'll just think about this briefly before we close things out with this video and let's talk about pain points. So if we look at pain points, maybe some pain point that your target audience is dealing with is spending hours a day in Messenger. Maybe it's not knowing what product to promote. And again, if you're stuck on what to come up with for pain point ideas, think about where you were at early on. Think about a previous version of yourself and what you were stuck on early on in your journey. Eventually, as you start to put out more content, connect with more people within your audience, ask more questions, you'll start to get a clear snapshot of exactly where people are getting stuck at and how you can bridge that gap to move them from point A to point B. So not knowing what product to promote, maybe it's feeling like an imposter, not knowing what to spend time on, Maybe it's feeling like they're not being effective with their time. Maybe it's an ultra specific, specific one, like not knowing how to transition the conversation from small talk to sales talk. Maybe it's not knowing how to present an offer.
I could continue on here for hours and hours and hours of different pain points that you can attack or go after within your content to make purposeful content. But this is what you wanna think about. The more general it is, like feeling like an imposter, the less specific of a result it will provide. But once you start to dial in topics like not knowing how to transition the conversation from small talk to sales talk, now you're really showing your audience that you have a very deep and clear understanding of where they're stuck at and how you can help them. And this is showing them that, hey, Blake really knows exactly where I'm at. Blake really knows exactly how to get around it. And I wanna learn more about how I can work with him to break past this. The more specific your content is, the more ultra specific it is, the more pain points it's resolving itself and speaking towards in a very specific way, the more you're showing your audience that you have a crystal clear understanding of where they're at and where, where they need to go to get to that point itself. So if you're feeling stuck, start with just pulling out a document and writing out a list of pain points that you can go after within your content. And from there, once you have that list of pain points, you can start breaking these topics up and saying, okay, now if feeling like an imposter, that goes in the mindset category. So maybe I can make a value-based content on this. Maybe not knowing how to transition the conversation from small talk to sales talk is something that I could create a lead generation post around. Maybe I could create a free training on how to transition the conversation from small talk to sales talk and then put out a post around who wants to see my free training around this topic. Because that's so specific, it speaks to your audience in such a deep way that they're going to want to raise their hand and learn more about this training that you're rolling out, especially if you're incorporating these components of content beforehand to nurture them and build their trust. So before we wrap up this video on elements of content and how to come up with a bunch of different content ideas that actually serve purpose to your audience itself, I wanna mention something that I put up a few days back that if you have not taken advantage of yet, you'll definitely wanna check out if you're struggling with this topic around content ideas and getting this in place. So inside my free Facebook group, Unleash CEOs, I put out a post a few days back mentioning this free training that I put together specifically for members of my Facebook group. So I put together a training called the Six Figure Content Vault. Basically, this goes over 10 different post types that my clients and I use to generate hundreds of leads every single month and hundreds of sales along with it. So with this training, I'm showing you the elements of content that you can put out and how you can tie these into what we just spoke about in today's video to make your content creation an easy and effortless process and use it as a way that actually bridges the gap and drives leads on demand without you just having to rely on messenger conversations to do so. So if you haven't gotten access to this yet, if you haven't seen this post yet, and if you aren't a member of my free Facebook group yet, I'm gonna leave that linked below in the description. Be sure to join the group. Once you join the group, I'll be sure to get you tagged in this post so you know exactly where it is and you can get access to this free members area and start diving into the free content I put together for you and dialing in your content and reaping the benefits from that itself. So that's a wrap for today's video on how to produce a bunch of different content ideas that actually serve a real purpose to your audience and actually move them from being someone that doesn't know you and doesn't like you yet to someone that knows you, likes you, and trusts you to someone that is a raving fan and ultimately someone that wants to work with you and learn more about how you can help them at a higher level and purchase your higher level products. So if you got value from this video, be sure to drop a thumbs up below and be sure to drop a comment below if you have any questions or if you want to share your thoughts on the video itself. And aside from that, if you have not yet already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you're not missing out on any future videos and trainings that I drop for you here on the channel itself. Again, I'll be leaving my Facebook group, Unleash CEOs, linked below in the description. So if you haven't gotten access to that six-figure content vault yet, I highly recommend you join the group comment on the post and get access to that ASAP so you can start reaping the benefits of that free training that I put together for members of my Facebook group. Thanks again for watching and I will see you on the next video.